I wanted to share with you how a little pile of quail eggs inspired a series of courses. I bought these off of Etsy and I just really bought a assorted pack because I like the different colors. I like the different patterns. Look how fat some of these spots are. Some are really delicate. This coloration I really liked. So this became a practice in my sketchbook because I bought these and I knew I wanted to use them. This was my handmade sketchbook and I've shared the entire sketchbook, but this was the first thing that I did with quail eggs. So I started here with figuring out colors and how to mute them and how to get them light, but in the same tones. And then I played around with painting them in the different spots. You can see these are larger spots. These are fainter spots. And then I just wrote quail eggs using the palette colors. I really, really was inspired by this page because of the soft muted colors. I had never done anything this soft before. And I like that they're almost colorless colors, if that makes sense. You can see that there's little blue, there's green, there's brown, but they are so faint that unless you really come close, you see the differences. From here, I started playing around with using it in a still life. So I had brought in some leaves from the yard, like I always do, and I put some quail eggs on, on it to see if I could create something that was kind of stimulating for myself. And this really was exciting because I had never thought about setting stuff on leaves. And this spurred a whole nother subject. But again, I was playing with the soft muted colors, the leaves, I wanted them to kind of coordinate. So this is the leaves, here's the background and here are the egg colors. You can see that I really accentuated the shadows because I found that really intriguing. To bring your eye to the eggs, I have those deep shadows to really give you the darkest and the lightest values in two places, more here than here. This got me thinking about quail and eggs and what else can I do with them? It's that simple. Who knew that a little pack of quail eggs would inspire this? So let me show you what happened after the sketchbook. Because I was so inspired by the color palette, I decided to just see what colors I could come in, up with using a limited palette. I was just plain, I wanted them soft, I wanted them earthy feeling, I didn't want anything too bright. You can see these are the colors down here that I mixed them with, so they're much brighter, but this is how I toned them down. So all of these colors over here are really like muting colors or toning colors that take the brightness away from them. They're either complementary or they have a lot of white in them. And once I did this, I was like, oh my gosh, this would be such a fun class. <laughs> then I started thinking about a whole sketchbook series because I like to study something with the palette. I like to study something with a subject, see what else I can add and how I can have fun with it and make them a little bit of a twist. I decided to come up with a sketchbook that would house this. So let me move this. This is a Stillman Burn beta series and it's the square. I think it's eight by eight square. And I really love the size of a square sketchbook. Now this has like mixed media paper in it. It's not really watercolor paper, but I love this paper inside the sketchbook. And when I first started doing this, I knew that I wanted to have a blank page so that I could write all of my sketchbook series that are in this one notebook. I wanted one continuous notebook that I could study and study and study into. So the first thing that I did was come up with kind of a logo for myself. I knew I wanted soft colors from that beginning sketchbook where I had those pale colors. I just thought that that was really beautiful. And then adding the ring around it, I thought really encompassed the egg, the circle. Eggs to me are feminine, so it's like the circle of life, so I wanted to add a circle. This little quail came later, so imagine just this was on here. As I progressed through the class, we talked about creating the color chart just like this really big one here. I don't create this big one in the class with you, but I do create a portion of it so that you know how to do it. And then I tell you what colors to kind of try so that you can create your own. And you can see every tone is more muted and soft so that you know how to do that yourself using the palette, the palette of colors you own. 
From there then, I wanted to go into eggs and the egg shape and how to do them, how to develop them, playing with different spots, playing with what on wet and what on dry. It's always interesting to try different mediums to get you spots. Then I went into the feathers because this is an actual quail feather, which I loved because of the spots. And I just decided to try it on an egg and see what it would look like. And you can see here we talk about the feathers, how they grow, how they the veins are, the curvature, and what the actual elements are called. And then we just started drawing a real quail here. And I loved this bird so much. He was so fun to, to draw with this little plume that I decided to shrink him and redraw him and this guy became this guy. And you can see he's here in all the colors that a quail actually is. And then we played with exploring values and tones on your eggs. And then we took them into the garden. And for the garden, I actually include photographs from the garden so that you can see them. I actually carried the little eggs out when there was little flowers. Here's a really cool one with a shadow. I've got these. Look at this shadow of the violet there. I love that one. And then tucked in. So we're using these photos then to create little pieces of art for ourselves. These are all the colors that I used here so that you could see them. And again, these were from the garden photos. And I really love the way that the, those came out. So after quail eggs and feathers, I was inspired by this. I found this little fox at an antique store. Isn't he the cutest? Look at his little sly eyes. <laughs> but I just loved this little fox. And it's a different color for me with all this orange. And then one day at Hobby Lobby, I found this fox. He's a little cuter version. These became the inspiration for my next sketchbook series, which I named Fox and Fern. I created a color chart for them to see how would I explore that orange, right? Look at this bright orange here because he's really quite nice. Look at those, kind of like a burnt sienna, but I wanted him a little brighter, especially for the, the other one from Hobby Lobby. I also knew that I needed earthy tones because I wanted to include ferns from outside. So that is where these are a little more mossy gray, a little more grayer in tone. They're, I've got some browns in here. I've got a lot of different colors to play with. And again, this was something for me to try before I showed you Fox and Fern. Inside the sketchbook series, I started a Fox and Fern. I found a really fun typeface. Look, I even made the O into a little fox there with the little ears. Isn't that cute? <laughs> and the first thing we do here is, again, play with color. You're not making this whole color sheet, but I am showing you exactly how I do it here. And then we play with your own colors so that you can see what kind of colors you can make. And a lot of people are really liking that I am letting them use their palette, right? I'm not, I'm, I provide a list of colors that I use, but I really, really want you to use your palette so you learn how to mix and tone and to use complementary colors to help you mute tones down. From there, we went to the ferns. These were actually ferns from the yard and you get a whole page of different ferns that we study and we mimic. You can see here we talk about drawing them and then we talk about painting them. Here we worked out what the elements are called on the fern. You know, it's not just a stick or a branch or a vein. This is actually the axis, so learning the names is very helpful. And then from there we went to smaller ferns. You can see these ferns right here. This is called a painted lady fern, by the way. But look at those little bitty leaves. So we talked about how they're structured, how you can make them all just kind of look uniform without really looking for uniform, using different colors to pull it out. And then this was a narrow leafed glade fern. And from there I have the drawing and then we worked it out in color. And then we go into the cute foxes. Look at him. <laughs> you get pictures of both foxes. So you can see I've got him turned all different ways so that you can actually 
have a clear close up and learn how to draw him. But I also took him out into the garden. You can see he's with different mushrooms. Here he's with different plants tucked in a, an old stump. And it's just something to inspire you. And you can see how fun he is here. And here I actually drew him with the mushrooms. And then we have the other fox from Hobby Lobby. So you get a, again, front three quarter and side view of the fox so that you can play with that. We actually draw him here. And because my sample had the little scarf on, I showed you how you could tie different knots on it, how you can make it look like he's more playful, which is what I wanted from him. And you can see I've changed his color to a really bright orange. As I was sitting here playing with the scarves and stuff, I said, you know, it'd be really cute to add a sweater. So here we talked about adding the sweater so that it would just make him a little more playful. And I love that. That is what's included in my sketchbook series so far. And as you can see too, it's about halfway through my sketchbook. So I love that. I could probably get two more courses in here. And I like that I'm able to study in one book and go through the same process of the color, of learning how to draw, and then creating them with in the garden or by themselves. These courses are currently available on my Teachable site. And at the end of April, I have a new one coming out, Birds with Blooms. I wanted to, you to see in depth how I was inspired to create a course by Tiny Little Eggs and how it prompted me to dive a little deeper, play with color, look at the objects really close, see what I like, see what I want to take away from it, but also let you be individual as well so that you can find what is inspiring you. If you like them all in a natural setting, take them in a natural setting. It's about being creative in many, many ways. And that's what I love about the sketchbook series. I would say you need to get on my Rooted Chronicles, which is my weekly newsletter list, because periodically I do give sales, but whenever a course opens, I usually give a early bird special, and that is usually only to newsletter followers. I hope you've been inspired by the progression of a simple egg leading to a sketchbook series. If you were inspired by today's content, please like, comment, or subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.